everybody, it's Caitlin Bristow. You already know that because you're looking at my face. Welcome to Off the Vine. I'm excited for today because I can't believe this is the first time they've done my podcast, but Jojo and Jordan are on the podcast today. So please enjoy because they are so lovely and so easy to talk to. I just want to do things in person, but somebody lives in Puerto Rico, wherever you are. I'm so jealous. Uh, Step out here on an island. Bad. Oh my gosh. Come on, you guys. I wanted to start off by saying... Um, your spritz so i took him to the fourth of july party my girlfriend's husband their family has this pool and it, i already felt like i was like in europe and because their pool is gorgeous and then we had your spritzes out and i like laid out the towel and i was so pumped because i was gonna do this photo and i gave everybody a spritz and then their little baby chandler came and the party just kind of like forgot about everything else because cute baby alert and we were like chasing him around and drinking our spritz and then i got home and i was like son of a bitch it is so good Good. Honestly, and I just really like it. That's all that matters. It was so good. And um, that's like one of the only thing my girlfriend likes to drink is a spritz. So she was like, what a genius idea. So um, kudos to you for coming up with that. It is amazing. Thank you. So, and I know how hard the alcohol business is. So <laughs> if you Honestly, I'm going to talk to you offline because I've, yes, I'll talk to you offline. <laughs> yes, I have. I will help in any way I can. It's it's kind of um, it's really tricky. Like when I first started, I just thought, oh, it's, I'll just put my name on it and it'll sell. And then I was like, oh, just kidding. It's um, <laughs> like all the everything that goes into it. It's so hard. Oh, I want to talk about the renovations that you guys do because. <laughs> You have really been through it all as a couple to survive The Bachelorette, to then come out of it and survive rewatching it, then the first year, which yeah. is like the most impossible thing ever to get through, then to work together hosting, and then to, like you're you're kind of doing your own thing at one point, now you're working together, home renovations. You've really put your relationship to the test. Like, how do you do that? Oh, gosh. You know what? Like, the first year, Just close your eyes, I don't even right. know where to start, Caitlin. Yeah, like, I know. You know like, the first year is very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. And we went right home after AFR. And I had a house that I was going to start remodeling that I was like, Hey, I guess let's do this together. So think about let's three- add some more stress to our relationship. <laughs> yeah. yeah, long story short, we ended up finding out this is like maybe an outlier, but like, we really do well working together. Yeah, which we were That's shocked amazing. by. Um, the hardest part of our relationship was just being in the relationship, right? It was <laughs> yeah. not the renovating part of it. That's funny. That was the escape. That, that, times, was, that was kind of the escape because we love doing it together. Huh. Yeah. Wait, that's actually really cool. I never thought about that because to me, the hard part is working with a, a partner. Like I usually, I'm so particular and I'm so like competitive and weird. And sometimes I need to check myself about that because it can definitely cause problems. Um, but I find the escape like the the relationship part of it but i i can now re- understand coming off of that show and how hard that is um like i find it close to impossible to get through that so that's kind of cool you guys had that to do together yeah. and escape from the reality of what is reality television because yeah it's i know the first year is so hard and I, I remember you guys talking about in certain interviews like that you almost didn't make it and then you got through it and you chose each other and then your marriage got put off because of the pandemic. And then the best was doing the classic Shania Twain song. Looks like we made it. (laughs) And every lyric, I was like, this song was like, it was written for your wedding. (laughs) Honestly. Yeah, it was. um, We, I feel like the first year we we have been very open about it being very hard. You obviously play and understand kind of um you try to put on such a good face like you try to be perfect um because you think that you have to be and obviously now that we're away from that we it's we're very comfortable saying like that's not the reality like that is not how life works and yes there were so many times where we we would have it would be like hi 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 low 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 and it was like this for an entire year and so yeah we had this like one moment where we were like it's okay if this is not best for us as individuals, I love you. I respect you. But like, it's okay if this, if we both decide that this is not something that we, we want anymore. And that was like on the cusp of a couple blow up fights and a really tough, like month and a half. And we're just like, we don't have it figured out. And like, maybe it's best if we're not together, or maybe we need to come together and realize, Hey, we got a lot of shit we need to work on. And yep. we need to actually work on it instead of like. And do we want to, or is it the pressure? Oh, yeah, one hundred percent. 
that's a big, uh, like aha moment, I think is yeah. zooming out of the situation and going, are we doing this? Because everyone is like, Oh, a couple goals and they're perfect. And like, we look up to them and that we, you yeah. know, they're following your journey and they've just committed 11 weeks of their life to, you know, believe in your love story. Or are we doing this because we actually choose each other and want to? So obviously romantic as hell that you're like, no, we actually want to. Yeah. And also it's interesting too, because I find that, you know, I talk to other couples in my life that obviously haven't been through reality TV, just the people like the friends that I have in my life. And they go, it's funny for what we've all been through because the hardest part kind of comes at the beginning and you get through so much messy, hard crap that like usually in marriages, they're like, oh, it should be like blissful in the first three years. And the hard stuff is when the marriage happens and kids and everything. But we're like, let's get it out of the way now. So true. So true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, the first year, like it was hard. We figured out our flow. We, we, it was like, we had such a great relationship. And then you get into like COVID and oh, gosh. most people, I think like it was either COVID was really great for the relationship or it was really yeah. bad for the relationship. And like, thankfully we, we re recognize that we do really well in the same space. We do really well. Working and we spent together. like 24 seven together anyway. Like we had, we had Cute. like funniest time. We had a little like spat like a couple of weeks ago, like just a little tiff argument. Of course. And, and we're like, why are we like, why are we even fighting? And I, and I said something was kind of funny. I was like, you know what? Like, for how much time we spend together, so we should have way more fights than we actually do. So, relatively speaking, I'm like doing pretty good. Like, yeah, I know it's uh, it's shot. It's it kind of is surprising, but like we've done a good job of it. I'm proud of us. You should be because I mean you're one of the couples that has made it out of the Bachelor franchise. There's not many people that can say that. Yeah, see, sing it. <laughs> um, I remember I said this on a podcast the other day. I had to actually take a step back one, at one point. And I was actually so jealous of your relationship <laughs> because I thought like we were going to be the couple that made it and I believed in us. And then that whole thing fell through. And then you guys did what I always thought was going to happen where we'd get through it. And then he would repropose with a more beautiful ring. And then you guys did it. And I was like, I'm jealous, but obviously I'm so happy for you guys. It was a me problem, but it's just so, <laughs> it's so cool that you guys get to be one of the couples that worked and that this was like meant to be. It's kind of wild. It really is. Part of that like reproposing thing, I think, is also like the pro the initial proposal, albeit was as real as like either of us ever wanted because yeah. it genuinely was. But like then you go through that first year and you seem like you are 10 years removed from that phase where you're excited about spending the rest of your life together. And I'm like, we got through all the tough stuff. I'm like, I want that again. Like I want, not only I just want to buy my own ring, but I want to be excited about planning a wedding. I want to be excited it again about- It took so much time, yeah. Caitlin. Like everyone's yeah. like, before we got married, they're like, you know, we celebrated our six year anniversary the Thursday before we got married. And people are like, that's incredible. And it was like a running joke for everybody. Like, are these two ever going to get married? It's been six <laughs> years already. Yeah. Uh, like, listen, we tried in 2020 and then 2021. Okay, now 2022, COVID's done. We're going to get married. But like, time was our friend. Yeah. And like, yeah. I just am so happy that like there was so much pressure to do it sooner. And I'm so glad that we never listened to that because time was our friend in our relationship. I was going to ask you your advice for charity because I just believe that she is really there to find her person and she feels so comfortable and natural on TV and in person. And you just, you could just tell she's at the point in her life where she's ready for it. Would that be your advice to her moving forward outside of it is to just not listen to the noise? Don't listen to the noise. I mean, I think the noise is what really hurt us year one. Yeah. Uh, the noise was damaging to us and like that's the nature of the beast when you're on a show like this and you know it's like every media tabloid every assumption every preconceived notion about it you know like I was very wrong like I look back at like my season and like I had Jordan and I had Robbie and like what I thought of who Jordan was going to be after the show and who what I thought Robbie was going to be like after the show I was very wrong like I totally yeah. missed judge that and I had spent a whole season with these two because I just started to like let my own mind like just I was listening to what I thought people were thinking within that bubble 
Um, and I was so wrong. Yeah, well, you're also listening to producers th that want the drama, that want you to be like really torn between two yeah. people. I mean, I went through that too, where I was like, same mm -hmm. thing. I was like, I was so wrong. And like, obviously in that situation made the right choice that ended up being wrong, but still was meant to be. But like you, you need to be removed from the situation to really um, have clarity yeah. and see the, the real picture. Okay, you guys, I did it. I tried it. I tried Skims. It's about damn time. I've been wanting to try their products for a very, very long time. And then when they came on Off the Vine as a sponsor, which I'm so excited about, I tried, well, a lot of their products, pretty much everything. And I'm so happy to say that I love Skims just as much as I thought I would. Truly life-changing. And I will be replacing all of my underwear with their Fits Everybody collection ASAP. We're in it right now. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody, which as you know, I'm very on board with. Their underwear you guys, it's like stretchy and soft and everyone and every body should be able to be this comfortable. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go off on it because honestly, I forget I'm wearing underwear, which is my favorite. Just wanna feel naked. It's a very comfortable feeling. I'm wearing this really tight, but like soft material summer dress and I'm wearing these underwear underneath it. It doesn't leave the underwear lines either. Like I just wanna feel naked and I do. And I also got their scoop bralette and racerback bralette both in onyx and my boobies just feel as nice as my my booty, okay? I just love all their stuff. Major, major game changer. I was always looking for like a really comfortable pair of underwear like this. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing its shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time and it's available in sizes XXS to 4X. So yeah, believe the hype, okay? Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims Fits Everybody and more best selling essentials are available now at skims.com plus get free shipping on orders over $75 after you place your order be sure to let them know that we sent you so select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop down menu that follows so make sure you select off the vine so that they know that I sent you there and the time thing I think is so important yeah and like everybody's yeah. different everybody's gonna do what's for them maybe we took too long but that's what we needed and it was what was right for us but like really yeah, not listening to the noise, focusing on your relationship and making true decisions for your relationship for the better interest of you and not everybody yes. else. Yes, honey. Preach. I love it. <laughs> um, so I love that you two can work so well together because I feel like it's really cool to do, be able to host things together and kind of be on the same schedule if you do work together. So you did Cashpad, which I loved that show. So did we. Was that COVID that made it all... Dude, you know what? Cash prep was the most authentic thing because obviously that's what I was doing before I ever met Jordan. And then when he got into the picture, we started doing it together. And we were like, this is really cool because this isn't like we're jumping into a new thing that we have to figure out. We really can just do what we've been doing. And it's really cool. Yes. To show it. it was a great show. I think it was on the wrong network. Ah, we yeah. tapped into the CNBC. They were really trying to get into like this re, you know, reality. What do you call they were it? taking a dip into a reality bunch of shows to see if it worked on their network, and it their network is just business. And I think I we think, love that part of it. I love yeah. the business aspect of it, but it just I don't think it translated with like our audience as much. That makes yeah. sense. I feel didn't that same thing happen with the Big D where it was like on the like a maybe the wrong network had it and then you guys filmed everything and then it wasn't going to air and then a news like what happened there? Jordan, can yeah. You yeah, there's two huge conglomerates behind the TV businesses and they're merging right now, Discovery and Scripps. And so in that merger they dumped a lot of shows and canned them to write off his debt. Yeah. So it didn't air there and then went through a process of the creators of it getting rights to it and pitching it again to a bunch of different networks. So we ended up in a great spot because so we have happy. Peacock as well. A lot of people don't have cable. So a lot of people can stream it when they need to and it's on linear cable. So I think we ended up in the right spot. It just got caught up in like the business of TV. And Kaylin, Big D's on after Temptation Island and I couldn't be more stoked about that because I freaking love that show. Okay, <laughs> That's a good time slot to have. That's amazing. Love it. So for people that aren't watching, obviously they should be. Tell them like the kind of story of what is what goes on at the Big D because it's fascinating and I feel like I can't explain it as good as you two can. Jordan, would you like me to do it? Sure. You know, this is the simple form uh, explanation of it. So we take six recently divorced couples. Uh, we put them in a house together. All of them are ready to find new love. Okay. 
And what that looks like for some people, it's either moving on from their past, closing the door because they still haven't been able to do that and moving on into something better and hopefully more healthy. Uh, mm-hmm. Or it's or it's revisiting that that old love and rekindled love. And, and so you see so many different relationships, so many different dynamics. You have the drama. These are divorced couples that are recently divorced. It's not like years, like okay? Months. How do they so agree to this? That's crazy. That's great question. And then we just start throwing in single divorcees as well to come into the house to kind of mix up the dating pool. And, you know, they're they're in our age age group. Like these are younger, recently divorced couples. So it's it's really fascinating. It's uh, there's a you know, when you hear about the show, you think this is a train wreck. Uh, <laughs> there's a life that house on fire, uh, parts burn of it, it down. Yes. And parts of it, yes. <laughs> you get that, but there are so many like layers to this show and there's so much like I think growth and healing that people don't anticipate. But if you if you've been watching, if you haven't watched you catch up, you start to see that episode four or five, like a lot is starting to change. I'm going to give you people. two quick examples for people that have never seen it. One couple showed up on the beach. We met, we, you know, exes walked up on the beach to first episode. They wanted nothing to do with each other. They didn't have bad blood, but they were just like, I'm here to date. We're yeah. divorced. Like we haven't really talked. Stay out of my way. Stay out of my way. They're starting to realize their divorce was not as big of a deal breaker or the reasons as they initially thought. No and way. Confess their love together. They're not back together completely. The season's not over. We'll see what happens, but they definitely realize that there's still something there. Then another couple married for 14 years, 14 years, recently divorced. She's over it. He shows up, not over it. They had this breakdown at the beach where she said, Hey, I love you, but you have to let me go. I was so sad. I got, I got and he's sobbed. coming to the realization oh, oh, no. that it is over. You know what he says, Kaylin? She goes, she's sobbing. She was like, you have to let me go. And he, <gasps> with a crack in his voice, is, you know, you're really hard to let go of. Oh, I can't. I'm too emotional for this right now. That is so romantic. So it's the train wreck of chill, singles but... and reality TV. And then there's a lot of like really wholesome love and kind of genuine connection that's starting to happen yeah. now that we're midway through the season. The idea of the two people realizing that maybe their divorce was like not as big of a deal as they thought, because I think this is from divorced parents where I'm like, maybe mom and dad will get back together. (laughs) You know, it's so interesting. And that was kind of one of the reasons, like when they brought this show to us, we were engaged at the time. And so we were like, how does this fit? How can we be, how can we be the best host? Does it make sense for us? Right. Like we're engaged to get married. We've never gone through a divorce. Right. Um, And then we start talk to the creators of the show and really kind of dug into like, what all this show has it's like that was like the one thing that pulled on my heartstrings it was like nobody gets married thinking they're going to get a divorce my mom my dad both had marriages before they met each other and i remember having this conversation with my mom one time and her feeling like when she got a divorce at such a young age after having my two brothers like she felt like such a failure she felt like she wasn't going to ever get that second act in life and like and i think about that my mom is the furthest thing from that i'm like she was right. better for her. that divorce was, yep. it was better for her. Right. And so these people come in here, divorce was never part of the plan there. There's so much life left for them and hope and love, but there's something that's stopping them from getting there and coming onto the show. They start to confront that and they start to see what that is. And so it's a really cool kind of like evolution. I love that. I think you two are so perfect for hosting too. Like I, I know people have their thoughts on Nick and Vanessa Lachey, and I'm like, put you two in for Love is Blind. Like, that, you guys would be love perfect for that. Blind. Well, listen, we love all these shows, yeah. okay? We binge all of them. But, like, it, that was, like, prime time COVID. Like, everybody's locked in. That show has yeah. done so well. It's, it's done so well. What has been the biggest tiff so far on the season? Like, the biggest, like, dramatic moment? I feel like it's happening right now because you're mid-season. I think we should talk about dating support. Yeah. There is this couple, which, you know, this is not the fun side of a show like this, but there, there's a couple, Dee Dee and Takor, where you're starting to see there's a lot of toxic behavior that's coming out. Mm-hmm. They are divorced now, but you can see that there, there's probably trauma that Dee Dee has experienced from that, and it's coming out right now. And so this toxicity and their behavior, and I don't really know how, how to say this, but like that has been such a big thing because it's kind of scary to see that, but I yeah. think it's highlighted the behavior and Dee, Dee has this support group around her. And this is the first time with Dee, Dee and Chakor that like they're in a space where they actually have like professional help yeah. like there. 
to That's help so navigate cool. things. And so we have Dr. Jada, who's a part of the show. She's an incredible resource. Yeah. Sakura has these blow up fights. Like he drinks and can't handle his emotions. He wants her back. She wants to move on. So the best part about this show though, is that those conversations for both of them would never have happened yeah. if they weren't confronting it. And also they wouldn't have the support group around them during mm-hmm. those oftentimes ugly fights, which I think is the best part that it's happening. It's happening in a more controlled environment with support yeah. around them so they can like move on. That's actually so nice. And the reality is these, you know, some of these, we don't talk about this on the show, but some of them have children together. So they're going mm-hmm. to be in each other's lives. So they need to sort through those issues for yeah. many reasons. Yeah. For many reasons. But yeah, of course, when kids are involved, because you're going to have to co-parent for the rest of time. That's, yeah, that's so interesting. I love that you guys have a therapist on there that can work with them and they are in that controlled environment. Like we I would have loved that. I, w- I was talking about that to my producer. She was like, did you guys have that? And I was like, there was a there was a therapist there, but I, I never had to that. I would have used it. The only time she ever came in is when you get sent home. Oh, yeah. Then she's like, are you okay? And you're like, no. And then she's like, okay, well, like it's... it's- I don't even think I got that call after getting done <laughs> from bed, honestly. Really? I- Maybe I did. I blacked out. I, I think know. you blacked out because um, she... I remember I got sent home and I was like mortified and she came in and she was like she came into the hotel room to see how i was doing because you were probably like mentally okay for the most part (laughs) (laughs) i think it's for when you really need to like send in the big dogs which apparently was for me now now i know that i've heard that they offer like relationship therapy to contestants after the fact right to the couple they do now yeah This episode of Off the Vine is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Hey, Vinos, you Baylins. Whether you love true crime or comedies, celebrity interviews, news, or even motivational speakers, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue, right? And guess what? Now you can call the shots on your auto insurance too. Enter the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. The Name Your Price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, then they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you the options. That, my friends, is something you'll want to press play on. It's easy to start a quote and you'll be able to choose the best option for you fast. It's just one of the many ways you can save with Progressive Insurance. Quote today at Progressive.com to try the Name Your Price tool for yourself and join the over 29 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates Price and Coverage Match Limited by State Law. Oh, did you guys get to use her? I'd be like, hey, while you're here. <laughs> oh. oh, Dr. Jada? Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, oh, that was great. We we didn't even know half the time that we were in a therapy session, but we were in we it. And we walked in the out green of room, it. like before and after filming, and just be like, "Hey, th- those people are crazy." They and they're like, "Well, we kind of we fight about that sometimes too." Like, <laughs> I can't find the exact example, but like we would, yeah, sometimes go talk talk about like what had just happened, and like you know, Jordan would have one perspective on it, and I would have another perspective on it, and then we'd start to talk to Dr. Jada because she was in the green room with us. And then it's so like, fast, so it's actually about our relationship. And we're like, not what <laughs> we're two hours into this conversation. How are we talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah, all of a sudden you're like crying in the fetal position, being like, "Well, my inner child really needed this out of you," and you're like in a therapy session. That's incredible. We loved it. She seems awesome. And then, what is your guys' role like in that situation when there's drama, when there's certain things happening? What is your role as host of the show? And is it awkward ever for you guys to have to go in and be like, "Hey, by the way, like we're just the hosts here." Like, what is your role? You know, it's so funny. This was actually the first show that we've hosted together where we felt like it was, we could give a little bit of insight based on experience that we share together, right? In terms of you're meeting in a very unique way. You have cameras all around you. No one's used to this. We're asking you to open your heart up to just anything, right? Like to, that this could be real. Um, So from the get-go, we really wanted to make sure that they knew, like we aren't just like the hosts that are going to come here, read a couple of lines and then peace out and then tell you who's going home. We wanted them to feel like they had an outlet because I feel like for me, at least on our show, it's like you're, you're detached from your life, your people, your world, no phone, no nothing. And like, I would have my producer and I would have Chris Harrison when he was around sometimes that I could talk to. And I remember feeling like, God, I'm just glad I have that. Right. Like sometimes I just need to vent from what's going on around me and just talk to somebody. Um, So we tried to be that for them. And there were a lot of times where we would, off camera, just see someone struggling with something that maybe we had struggled with before in this sort of setting and and just go talk to them. 
I'm so glad you were allowed to do that because, you know, we we obviously come from and I've only really experienced like Bachelor and Dancing with the Stars as far as reality TV goes. And so that's all I have to compare it to. But like on Bachelor, you really can't talk to pe like the they usually want a camera around or the storyline has to make sense. So it's so cool that you guys are able to kind of be mentors in that situation and be there for them, which makes, you know, it's it's a good for them to be able to trust you guys and see that in you and then to have that connection between the host and the contestants is really cool. Um, and then the end prize. So how does that work? So it's $50,000 for the couple that like, do people vote? Like, how does that, the prize work? So we actually didn't, um, behind the scenes, we never told the cast that that was the prize. So there was <gasps> no, no way. ulterior motive. We were trying to avoid any ulterior motive to, Faking a relationship, I guess. That was going to be my next question. Like, do people fake it for the money? Okay, that's so cool. So they knew there was something at the end. It could have been a nice big participation trophy. It could have been a trip. It could have been, you know, yeah, anything. Yeah, a night in the hideaway. It could yeah. have been anything. Right. We kept that under wraps as much as possible. So at the end, when the voting does occur, it is much more of who is the most genuine, real relationship here. But I'll say the great thing about that is... You can't fake it when your ex is right there. Yeah. Like your ex, mm. it, 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 no, uh, that's not, he doesn't really like her. I'll tell you what. I mean, like you have to be right. yourself. Because there's someone true. there that knows you better than anybody that's going to fact check you no matter what you're doing. And I think what else is interesting is like all these, you, there is a voting process, but it's all done amongst everybody in the house. So you're living and seeing every single yeah. moment that you can't, you know, you can kind of fake something in the beginning, but you really can't hide and fake everything. And you do start to see, you know, we had a couple who there was a guy named Blair and Dee Dee. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they were starting and forming a connection. And then they got to the point where they just recognized, like, Blair actually doesn't really like her. And so, mm -hmm. like, and people caught on very easily. So I think it's hard to fake a genuine connection for that long when you're constantly amongst peers that are watching everything yeah. that you're doing and have a say on if something's genuine or not. That's a really good point. I was, that was going to be my next question because I thought they knew that that was the prize. And I was like, yeah. how do you even do that? Because your exes are there who know you so well. Like that is, yeah. Okay. That makes you know, sense. For season two, it'll be interesting. We'll have to think of something different, but I yeah. actually, I've already started to think like, I would love to see if there is an elimination of some sort, I would like to see that delayed. I would love to see these people spend more time together in one space for a longer period of time because I think more comes out of that and you start to see a lot more things yeah so that's kind of like one one thing I had in my head yeah. for season two I like that I was gonna ask is there gonna be a season two I love that we hope we yeah. have many people to watch I think it's like it's so hard for a new show to like get people like on on board but we like we love this show you know, yeah. and I think people really love the idea of binging something. So it landing also on Peacock next day has been so great because a lot of people don't oh, have yeah. cable where they can watch it live, you know? And so where it ended up from where it was supposed to be to now having USA Network and Peacock, we hope was, you know, the best of both worlds. I am so into binge watching. Um, are you guys yeah. watching Hijack on Apple TV? No. So we need to <sighs> Yes. Yes. I'm so, I'm like on the edge of my seat. Oh. It's um, obviously about a hijack on a plane, and each hour. It's like twenty-four. Flight anxiety. Day. How are you watching that? I I don't have. Yeah, I do have fl flight anxiety, but I don't have. Like I'm like this. Obviously, is I'm like one of those people that just goes. Ah, this is never gonna happen. So, yeah. but, but each hour represents his experience on the flight. This one main character, and it's the flight from Dubai to London. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I want to watch that. You should. Um, you probably don't have time because you guys are freaking busy, but... Always got time for a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, always. And it's only six oh. hours of your life. You're good. Yeah, fine. Okay, uh, one more thing about the big D. Let's talk about the same guy that interrupted our Instagram live with his D, and that yes. same guy did it to me. Who is this guy? I don't know, but we need to get him caught, and I don't know what the penalty is for that. But you were it's... adding someone you knew, right? Yes. Is that what you guys did? Yes. We thought we were adding Dr. Jada. Ah, Dr. Like, Jada. I was like, is this her husband? Like, what? Like, you're like, like Dr. Jada, you dirty yes. dog. Oh, God. Like, you know, the camera's on. Oh, my God. Who is that? Oh, my God. What is that? Then we just saw <laughs> that first, and we were like, 
What's happening? And then it ends up being great promotion for the big D. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. You're like, thank you for that because how perfect. That same guy came onto mine and I thought I was adding my best friend. And I, it's like the the process of the emotions are so funny because you're like, oh, 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 God. And you're like, no. And then you panic. And it's like, that's, I know. I couldn't believe the same thing happened to you guys. I was we like, a lot oh, about God. our relationship, actually. I froze. I was just... Yeah, and Joe's like, how do I turn it off? How do I turn it off? I panic and he freezes. <laughs> That's always learning about each other, you know? That's incredible. Um, I have one quick game for you guys before I let you go. It's called the Big Deal Breakers. <laughs> I'm so clever. Ooh. Oh, you like that? Yeah. Deal. Yeah. 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 Um, so on episode two of the Big D, the contestants were given a list of deal breakers. So I wanted to know what you two think are deal breakers or not. Okay, good. I like this. Ooh. Okay, so bad hygiene. Deal breaker or nah? Deal breaker. Deal breaker, big time. Yeah. Mm. Like, like, I just couldn't be attracted to somebody that had really bad hygiene. But I will say, yeah, since that. we've come together, JoJo does shower more frequently. Uh, you know, I would like to ask, it's do, one you, benefit. do you shower twice a day? Absolutely not. Thank you. Do you shower? That would take off my spray tan. Thank you. This man thinks like two showers is the bare minimum. No, no, no. I shower once every other day. Oh, I shower. See, I shower more than Caitlin. What about when you work out? That's when I, I will definitely rinse yeah. off after a workout. Yes. A hundred percent. And it'll be quick and it'll be cold and I'm scared for my spray tan to come off. But if I don't work out, I'm like, ah, I don't need to. Do that. So now I have to shower without, like, I can't get into my bed without a shower. Because, you know, the more I've thought about it, I'm like, I get that. So now it's a mental thing for me. I kind of get that. Like, I definitely have to shower after a plane. Like, if I get off a plane yes. and I'm going to bed, I refuse to. Like, that's disgusting. Yes. But so I guess it's circumstantial. Deal um, Heavy breather. <laughs> this is a personal thing for me. I can't do a heavy that breather. That would annoy me. Yeah. Like, I would be annoyed. And it's, so this means it's like forever. Like, it's a forever... Uh, Forever heavy breather. Can I ask another question? Like, yeah. have I fallen in love with them and then they start the heavy breathing, or is like from the get go? Ooh. No, it's I from the get go. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a really cute, really fun mouth breather. It's like you know. <laughs> oh, I just it's that's a thing for me. I can't. I like no. I can't even think about it. That's gross. Um, okay, what about no sense of humor? Oh, that's a deal breaker. No sense of humor. Are you thinking about this one? Like, what if you're like <laughs> his face? Deal breaker. I guess. I mean, yes. yeah. But I like. I yes. I guess deal breaker. You need a sense of yeah. humor. <laughs> I'm trying to be like, open. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be open. What about if they're friends with their ex? Not a deal breaker. Yeah. But I do think that yeah. I do think there's conversations that need to be had, and there's boundaries. Yes. Uh, I don't yes. think you feel breaker. Yeah. If you're comfortable. Yes. Everyone, if all parties are comfortable. That's, I, that is fair. Look at you finding all the loopholes. Um, okay. Uh, bad tipper at a restaurant. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but we're going to have a conversation. Yeah. More of a deal breaker is being rude to yeah. wait staff. I mean, you need to be. Because that's a, good... a character flaw. I think yeah. sometimes like, you might just be like bad math and not realizing that like 10% is not enough. And you yeah. Right. Funny. You two are good communicators. You're like, well, it, it, I don't know. We would have a conversation. Yeah, we would have be like, like we worked through some things. Cheap ass. <laughs> uh, okay, last one. What if they hate dogs? Deal, Deal breaker. breaker. Absolutely. Deal breaker. breaker. That's like something about your soul. That's that. Yes, I can't. I don't trust anyone who doesn't like dogs. Yeah. Um, okay, last thing. I always make my guests confess something to me on every podcast. So now is your chance to get whatever you need to get off your chest. Something that we don't know about you guys that's really embarrassing. I've never told this story. Okay. So after the, it's really not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna. Okay. I'm like, so, <laughs> so after while I was on The Bachelor. I remember at one point realizing like I had bitten to an apple or something oh. and I felt like my, my tooth was loose. And so I was like, holy moly, how's my tooth loose? I'm going to oh, no. like bad timing. So I Imagine realized that popping a tooth on the bachelor. No. So no. then we get off the show. We're together now. And I'm like, I need to go to the dentist. 
Um, I go to the dentist, we do some x-rays and we find out that I have two baby teeth still in my front. No. Baby teeth that have never Actual fallen baby out. Teeth. Um, <laughs> that one is very loose at this point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What is going to be loose at this the point? The x-ray is like, they're not even attached to the butt. Yeah, just it's, like, it's like, they just, I just never, they uh, don't know. Okay. Weird. Um, so we were like, oh, we can't have this. <laughs> yeah. So we are like, then we're going to need to pull your teeth and we're going to have to do an implant. So I'm like, well, I just got engaged to this dude that probably thought I was pretty cute, but here we go. Pull my two front teeth out. Um, well, the ones next to it, right, too. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't the two main. Those are the this is like, right after, I think. Oh, like, no. He comes to the dentist with me. Like, they do the surgery. I come out. I'm so, like, drugged up. I don't even know what's yeah. going on. I just have no two teeth, and I have, like, foam in my mouth. like that, too. And I'm like, did you see me no teeth? <laughs> well, I was like, no, sweet. Of course not. I did. Oh, I definitely did. Yeah. So that was like a really uncomfortable for me out the gates. I was like, well, that's weird. And so it's a, you still love me? it's a video he has on his phone that he will always look back on and just die laughing. He's coming out of surgery. With no teeth. Have you shared that video? You need to. No. <laughs> where is that? You kidding me how many times I've said, oh, but it's so funny. It's cute. Like, now I think we're past it. Maybe we can dig it out of the archive. But at the time I was so embarrassed and mortified. Yeah, I get that. Like, I get that. Know, but now I'm like, well, oh, here's the story. You're put on this pedestal of like being the most beautiful, like, uh, like, like. To know me, we're, you know, like, that's still cute. Just to know you with a gummy smile. The gummy smile. Hey, if he could love you through that. I'm telling you, you guys have been through it all. I got one on that same vein. I got a good Can we do one embarrassing about you? No, like, no, this is yeah. like. I mean, I don't have one, but this was actually, I thought was a deal breaker too. Like oh, I, before but... I got married, this was something that needed to occur. What? Jojo has never audibly farted in uh, front of me. Yeah. What? Haven't. Ever still? Still. My ear just fell out. <laughs> I told her really... once, before we got married, I'm like, it's got to happen. I am not walking down the aisle if you don't what? fart in I'm so confused how you've never let one slip. But like, here's the thing. Like I am naturally not a farter. Okay. Like I would burp. Uh, I would burp. I burp more. Comes out there. Okay. That was like this too. I've had this discussion. Gotta get her. out somehow. And it, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I, it's, it's become such a thing now that now I don't even feel comfortable to let it slip because he says this story all the time. We're now I'm like, now it's a thing. I did get crop dusted one time. He was in a separate room. I happened to walk into the room. And I was like, Oh, Oh, you did. <laughs> I love it. It's Jojo, you're so perfect in so many ways. Like you have to fart sometimes just to make us all feel better. You know what's so hard about this though, Caitlin, is right now, literally, we don't have bathroom doors. The one thing in this renovation that hasn't been done, we don't have bathroom doors. So she is like do you a do? ninja. I don't know how she does it. No, Middle of the I, night? No, listen, I I he, you came I into like, the bathroom I like, yesterday. I like I walk into my bathroom. <laughs> you like yeah. want it so bad at this point. It's like getting weird. <laughs> so weird. So, but I don't want. Here's the thing. I don't want it. Just if she like walked up and went, I'd be like, <laughs> like that's an doesn't do me. I want to catch one. Like I want to. He wants to out. embarrass me. He <laughs> wants to make me feel mortified. I, please let me know when this happens. Like well, when it finally happens, can you please text me and just say it happened? <laughs> I'll be very happy about it. I'm I'm weird like that. I'm like yeah. I so I don't know how to burp, which is the weirdest thing. So you fart a bunch. So I, I'm a farter. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it's got to come out somehow. <laughs> they just slap out all the time. I can't help it. Wow, learned a lot here, everyone. I'll literally be like, get out of the room right now if you don't want to be a part of this. Like, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I Maybe I have questionable hygiene. I need to check myself a few times. Um, Jordan, you can't get away with not telling an embarrassing story about yourself. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Beat that. I gotta think, too. I should have one, like. Nothing oh, happened okay. after where you were like, you didn't, you, like, you guys know. both came off a show where you had to be like, this is the real me. Yeah, no, clearly that all just came from one end over here, me. I have, like, <laughs> well, I'm trying to help me. I, I don't know. I don't get embarrassed very easily. He got one time when we first got together, he got so belligerently drunk in Nashville. 
That's and I happened. stayed home that, that night. Does, that's not something that happens. It doesn't like. happen. But he got so drunk and he came home. I didn't go out with him. I don't know. Stayed home. And which also never happens. Yeah, <laughs> like it, was a, it was a out. weird night. It was a weird <laughs> night. Yeah. Like yeah. rooftop and some rumble mints got the best of me. And, and that I, will happen. So someone I, so kind of grossly yeah. drunk, like got mm. naked and was like vomiting. It was not so good. God. I put a sentence together. I was like, which again has never happened since. Had never happened before that. So maybe Nashville oh. will get you. I've never seen that since that night, and it was so well, good. Abrupt. It was interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, Not the finest moment, though. But every time you have to embarrass him, he doesn't like it. Like, this it's true. not a proud moment. That's true. Yeah. Not a proud moment. Okay, well, there. I'm glad we got this off your chest and we forgive you. And I'm sure people have stories to relate to it. And uh, I think at the end of the day, we realize that I'm the gross one here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell everyone where they can watch the show, Peacock. And did you say another platform? It's on USA Network Live every Wednesday, 10, 9 Central, right after Temptation Island. Or you can stream it next day on Peacock. Peacock. Is there anything else I missed that you want to say? <laughs> Miss ya. Hope you're doing good. Miss ya. Love ya. You guys are amazing. We'll come in person. We'll come in person. Absolutely. We'll find a time when we're both in the same city and make it work. Awesome. You're the best. Thanks, Kate. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Get through it. Coffee and water, and you got this. Love All right. Day. See ya, sister. <laughs> okay, bye. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.